Hello, welcome back to the Art Channel with Grace Adam and Joshua White. And this week we are looking at the work of Pablo Bronstein at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. At Chatsworth, Pablo Bronstein is staging an exhibition of watercolours and drawings on the theme of the Baroque, of historic style and design. And of course this house is so important as a repository of objects collected during the Grand Tour, this process whereby young aristocrats would be sent to Italy to further their education, where they could develop their taste and knowledge of art, and subsequently they would bring work back to their family houses like Chatsworth to embellish the family collections. Bronstein has gone through the collection and selected 60 objects and he was given free reign to choose what he wanted and he's taken those objects to Nottingham Contemporary. The two films that we are making are all about Bronstein's response to Chatsworth House, to the idea of Baroque, the idea of collection, uh, the idea of being a connoisseur and of taste and how that changes. And when we see the objects uh, at Nottingham Contemporary, they are very different because they're in a different context. So it throws up some interesting questions. And the exhibition is part of a larger project called the Grand Tour, which is a proposition that you can have a modern mm. experience of the Grand Tour linking together four cultural institutions in Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire, including Nottingham Contemporary, Chatsworth House, Welbeck and Derby Museums. We're standing uh, at Chatsworth in the Old Master Drawings Cabinet, uh, a dedicated room for uh, the showing of this extraordinary collection of 3,000 drawings. And the, today we have a selection of ornithological studies. And here in this room, Pablo Bronstein has made a special work for the exhibition that relates to the Rembrandt portrait behind us on the wall, which is a permanent feature of this intimate space, an old man in oriental costume. And you can see here the replica mm. of the Rembrandt, because this is a decorative scheme for exhibiting that painting. And we can see it's on a much larger scale. He's expanded the space and he's added all of these extraordinary details, these decorative mm. flourishes. Mm. There are shells and mirrors and swags and carving in stone and also um, plaster molding. It's very elaborate, isn't it? It's an amazing drawing and it's, it's part of Bronstein's complete fascination with the 17th and 18th century, with this kind of opulent, over-the-top, uh, decorative, uh, way of uh, building the world and I think it's quite interesting that he's played with the scale like you mm. say to such an extent there are tiny little chairs down at the bottom of this drawing there's a great sense of depth it's a it's a beautiful kind of trick to look at and as you say the Rembrandt just slotted into the center like a tiny postage stamp this incredibly important painting becomes just part of a possible scheme you know a, a possible piece of architecture a, a, a fantasy room and what Bronstein is considering is this age of the Baroque, this style invented during the Counter-Reformation on continental Europe mm. and brought to Britain later in, uh, at the end of the uh, 17th century, which is embodied in mm. this house here at Chatsworth. Um, and you can see these strong shadows mm. cast, can't you? It's almost like illuminated. Um, we don't see any um, presence of people, but it's, a, it's like a set waiting to be enlivened. It is, it to is. Be, to be populated yeah. by life. It's very much a piece of theatre, isn't it? It is a backdrop for some action that's going to happen. But it's, it's incredibly, um, it's completely over the top. It's so crammed with ornament, as you say, shells and vases and mirrors and swags and ribbons. And it's, mm. it's a real, it's a, a beautiful mess, sounds very rude, but it is this incredible embodiment of all this collecting, all this um, getting, all this bringing home of objects uh, from mainland Europe. We're standing in front of a piece uh, which is called Stage Design for an Oliver Cromwell Ballet, which um, uh, already draws you in because it's quite a strange idea. And it's a beautiful kind of slice through uh, this Baroque theatre, this, this interior space with lots of rich reds and greens and this amazing kind of um, trick uh, of stage design. Here you've got uh, Cromwell in the middle with his little rows of yellow and pink dancers either side of him. Um, 
Bronstein playing with scale again and very, very knowingly. Uh, the dancers are tiny, Cromwell is enormous. And as you get drawn in, you see that there are not errors or mistakes, but deliberate, just things that can't quite work. And I think that's what makes these drawings um, very contemporary. It reminds me, actually, of the theatre designed by Palladio and mm. Vincenza, these very accentuated mm. perspective lines uh, that lead the eye into the distance. But then if we look very closely, we can see that Cromwell is holding the head of mm. Charles I. And it's an absurdity. It has a certain camp mm. quality. Uh, and of course, famously, Cromwell was a Puritan. Mm. And actually, during the Protectorate, um, he banned uh, live theatre performances. So this is an impossibility Absolutely. that's yeah. been imagined and staged um, rather archly by Pablo mm. Bronstein. And you can see some of the audience here in their boxes. Um, it's as if we see simultaneously both the viewers and the performers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a clever piece of drawing because, uh, of course, it can't work. You're looking at it from multiple viewpoints, um, a bit like, you know, the Baroque. Nothing is as it seems. So you are getting um, strange views from different angles. You're, you're drawn in. People don't look particularly engaged. They're kind of sitting like a, a little statues in these chairs. And as you say, Cromwell in the middle, this absurd artifice, it's never going to happen. So his, his camp approach uh, has taken, uh, you know, it's quite an extreme form in this piece of work. We're looking now at a work called Palladian House, refreshed in lemon yellow. It's as if a building can be reinvented mm. with a decorative scheme, with the application of new paint. And we can see what appears to be ostensibly a design for a Palladian house with all of these neoclassical flourishes, the Corinthian order, these columns that are very decorative um, at the capitals. Uh, we have all this stonework that Bronstein has very precisely mm -hmm. uh, described. Um, a group of visitors, again, rather kind of minute below at this basement level. And this strong light that allows us to pick out all of the extraordinary uh, detail of the stonework. Mm. It's an extraordinary drawing or painting, really. Um, partly because the, the building itself is just is, is on white paper and there is no context apart from the figures. So it's very much a design, a scheme. And I like the idea, I like the title, Refreshed in Lemon Yellow. Uh, and I like the idea that you can, uh, as, as Baroque um, steals or pastiches other styles, you can put another layer on, as you say, you can refresh with, with new paint, with new color, with lemon yellow, uh, a kind of new name for paint. And I, I, I particularly love this fantastic symmetry. It's, it's a it's it's a beautiful, elegant building, and it's utterly ridiculous at the same time. It's covered in ornament, um, but bizarrely empty. There are a few figures, as you say, at the base, some in these archways, but it's very, it's, it's devoid of life. Um, these black holes where the windows are, this incredible sense of depth. It's, it's quite some kind of eerie piece of work in a way. It's very technical, mm. and it consciously quotes the interest in Palladian architecture, which arose in Britain in the, mm. in the mid to late 18th century. And there was a famous book called Vitruvius Britannicus that published designs for mm. Palladian villas and houses, a type of building that could be uh, seen in Venice. But what's interesting about this work is that it takes us to the idea of style. Mm. And I think that's a consistent theme through his work, the preeminence of style mm. and a taste for particular styling Yes. Yeah. Um, that might be um, as simple as choosing a particular shade of yellow. Yeah. And, and the idea that these, these drawings are a look at a, a very a dominant class of people with a dominant taste that spreads out across the UK. And you know that relationship between money and style and taste, good taste, bad taste, but taste nevertheless. 
This piece, which is ink and watercolour on paper, is called Dramatic Unveiling of a Monument to Peter the Great in Moscow. And it's rather an extraordinary piece. It is this ridiculous monument sort of rising up out of the ground, this bronze colour, revealed these great kind of barn doors, these flaps coming open to show it. And it's in this kind of strange, marshy um, landscape, probably next to the sea. I don't know. It's, a, it's an extraordinary drawing. I noticed all the pulleys there, mm. um, the ropes that uh, lower down these screens to unveil, as you were saying, this uh, ridiculous <laughs> a monument. And, and Bronstein is actually quoting uh, a sculpture that was made for the river in Moscow uh, by a contemporary artist or sculptor. And you can see that here Peter the Great is standing on what looks like a, a to toy boat. Mm. And the scale is completely inept. Um, and then you have a kind of a series of stacked elements. What is this drawing really addressing? Well, the pomposity of public mm, sculpture, mm. of the figures they represent, um, yeah. Peter the Great's overweening ambition, mm. standing on a toy boat. Yeah, no, I think he, 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 it, there's a lot of slices, a lot of layers to a, to a piece like this. As you say, it's, a, it's about power, it's about Peter the Great, it's about the ridiculous of, of memorialising uh, our leaders, uh, good or bad. And it's about another piece of artwork which he doesn't particularly like. So there are lots of comments going on here. And there's that awkwardness too of the uh, unveiling and mm. a kind of bathos or anticlimax. Mm. Yeah, how do you do uh, it? <laughs> of just um, revealing uh, this thing, really, um, that's totally out of proportion. Mm. I mean, I think unlike the drawings of Palladian. Um, houses which are you know elegant in some way this is not this is ridiculous it's clumsy um, it's an extraordinary event it's it, it's very kind of Heath Robinson um, and the only way he pulls it off is because it is such a beautifully made piece